Okay, that's a wrap. I'm still recording though. Just uh, I put our uh, last uh, podcast notes, or I, what I call it, I called it our wrap up show or something like that. I liked I, that. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. I I like to I like to just catch up with you after the fact. Boy, was that an action packed episode! I didn't realize it would be. Until it's we funny. got about halfway through it, then I started looking at all we had to do. Totally forgot about the Constitution. Which oh, I'm you, glad you remembered. Uh, I yeah, you so I started I like talking. You brought it up this time. Uh, I started talking really fast. Uh, <laughs> to get <laughs> no, to you it. did good. That was cool. I appreciated that. And but that was an important story that you were talking fast about the the thing that's happening with Facebook and. Google. I Google. I mean, this is crazy, crazy. You made some good points. I. I guess what I have to say, so there's some really good news there that uh, we are politically taking this very seriously with a lot of, um, what's the word, we're really expediting that, we're taking it very seriously. And to your point, when Biden gets in there, and he's, he's so bought off in so many different ways anyway, we better get on top of this before January 20th. Uh, get the ball rolling in a big way and get some momentum going and get uh, the common people more educated on the seriousness of this issue, which I think is just now happening. I think that social dilemma movie helped a great deal. I hope so. I really hope that people will start to have their eyes open to what these folks have in mind. It's, it's interesting, something I've been thinking about um, and, and something I, I meant to bring up earlier about the House of Representatives and the, really the, the whole legislature has to do with the fact that they, they don't have the, the power to delegate any authority to any outside uh, sources, whether it's uh, uh, government sources like these bureaucrats, uh, even the FDA. That, that's... that's um, that's extra constitutional. It's not in the constitution, but, but these bureaucracies make laws all the time. And you're also seeing these multinational companies that are collaborating in there and they are causing us to, they're directing how we live our lives. And yet they don't have any real allegiance to the United States. They have allegiance to, allegiance to wherever the money's coming. And apparently a lot of it's coming from China now. Mm. And so mm -hmm. um, we, have a, we have them. Uh, we've got the bureaucrats that can put together regulations. They call them regulations. But a regulation is a law. Mm. They're making more regulations every year than the, than the legislature makes laws. Uh, exponentially wow. more. And that's not, and, and we look at the constitution and we see, well, wait a second. The only person that the only place in the federal government that has the power to make laws is the house and the Senate. Not, not any of these, not the FDA, not the food and drug administration, not the CDC, but yet they're constantly doing that. And you also see where social media is helping to enforce that they're in cahoots together. So we're, we're seeing some really interesting things that are getting far away from where where we're supposed to be in the constitution so hopefully people will get some of this information we're disseminating and their eyes will be open to wait a second they're not supposed to be doing that yeah yeah there's a lot of funny business going on there there is a lot of fun what do you got going on this weekend so I uh, still just, you know, getting ready for Christmas. That's about it, you know, yeah. I, and I don't even know what we're doing. It's so weird because we're not supposed to get together. I know the kids are going to come over, uh, but, um, you know, I don't know. It's a, This is a weird time. It's a really yeah, weird time. Well, that's why we're trying to stress the last couple podcasts of a few podcasts about trying to make a plan for our pandemic holidays here and make them as special as possible though. It'll be behind us soon enough. Uh, thank God. Yeah, that's true. You that's know, true. my mom just uh, asked us a few days ago if she's like, Hey, you know, whatever you say, fine. But what if, me, uh, you and Lisa and Scott and Carol, my brother and sister, well, what if the five of us get together for dinner? And I said, oh, well, I'll, I'll talk it over with Lisa and we'll see. And now we also 
asked, uh, I, I was talking to her about having my buddy uh, Irby over on New Year's and we're just, you know, Lisa made a good point. She goes, you know, we're almost through this. We're almost on the other side of it and everything's really bad right now. Maybe we should pass. Just suck it up for just this. And I'm like, yeah. it makes a lot of sense to me. Anyway, so we are, Lisa's super excited about this weekend because we don't have anything at all planned. She's normally, oh, got herself so busy. We're going to, she says, she proclaims, we're going to sit around and what we've been into Ozark, uh, the show Ozark. Oh, um, I haven't heard of it. Oh, it's so good. It's, it's dark. I'm going to tell you, but it's so good. And it's on Netflix. So that's why you don't know about it. Ah. Uh. And um, we are on season two now. See, I watched it first. There's, there's three seasons thus far. Then they're going to come out with the fourth, and that's it. And I love that. This is like, it's up there with Breaking Bad for sure, as far as uh, just uh, great, great, great series. But, and I got to give it up for the creators, the producers that will cap it at season four rather than run with the cash cow. Yeah, right. And ruin it. And yeah. yeah they, they run out of ideas, but they still want to collect yeah. the cash, right? Yeah, yeah. Fonzie jumping the shark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, no, that's ending the season four, and man, I want more, I want more, I want more. So, right now, we only have to season three. Lisa, so we're on like maybe the fourth episode of season two out of 10. She thinks we're going to get through all the se six episodes to get through all the season two Saturday, tomorrow. Six Are hours. Hours? Okay. Six, six ah. hours of Ozark. Okay. She cannot do it. She can't do it. She's crazy. <laughs> that girl can't sit still for anything. That's funny. So we're planning like what kind of light appetizers we can have throughout the day. And, you know, that's lead cool. Up to, oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I love that kind of stuff. That's that's yeah. really cool. And don't you love when you get like a, a, a show, like a series like that? Yes. that you can't wait till the next episode. To yeah. Come out? Oh, I'm watching that. I'm watching this one. I'm trying to really get into it. And I think it, yeah, it's called The Hand of God. And I started watching, it's on Amazon Prime, and because it's got five-star ratings. There's only two, two seasons right now. And Ron, Ron Perlman and Dana Del, Delaney star in it. And you'll be very interested in this. So Ron Perlman is this really highfalutin judge. And he's got tons of money and power. And his son commits suicide. Oh. This is like how it starts. His son is uh, on a respirator. Uh, Clint, like, I guess you call it clinically dead. Mm -hmm. But he starts hearing his son talking to him and all the strange stuff going on. And uh, getting messages, seeing the TV uh, turn on, giving him a message, and but nobody else sees it. So everybody oh. else thinks he's going crazy. And he thinks God is talking to him. And so he befriends this uh, up and coming priest, or yeah, I guess a priest, um, or minister, uh, whatever you call him. And it's, it's kind of like what I'm seeing unfold here is the question of, is this guy crazy or is God talking to him? While he's trying to, uh, oh, he, he's getting this other guy, this ex-con to kill people for him that He's hearing his brother okay. say, this is the guy that, that raped my wife. That's what Oh, my gosh. It. Wow. Oh. So, so there's all kinds of crazy stuff going Intrigue on. Intrigue and, yeah. But there's a huge religious element to it. As I'm seeing it unfold, I'm only a few episodes in. I'm trying to figure out where it's going. And I think a lot of it is, is it God or is it, is it crazy? I'm not sure. I'm not sure where it's going. But it's got a five star rating, so uh, maybe you want to take a look at it. I don't know. It's called well, the Hand, the Hand of God. Hand of God. Interesting. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. I like. I like. Uh, I, it, it's intriguing. So I'll, I'll keep an eye out for it. Yeah. Hey, uh, with the last few minutes that we have, so I was. I was. Um, Last Friday, uh, you know, I, we did our show, and man, I had a, a long day on Friday. And then afterwards, I found out about this uh, that the Supreme Court rejected uh, the Texas challenge to the yeah, victory. Yeah. 
And I was kind of like, well, that's weird. I wonder why they wouldn't even consider it. You know, and a lot of folks came out and said that, well, you know, even the Supreme Court won't take a look at this. There's no merit to it whatsoever. And so when I started to look in to find out well, what's going on with this, I found out that the Supreme Court never weighed in to the merits of was there fraud, was there tampering, was it, they never said any of that. What they said was that the 17 states that, including Texas, that they brought this against the four swing states didn't have any standing in court. Mm -hmm. um, so their whole uh, case was leveraged on the fact that their individual rights had been uh, their voters, each state's voters' individual rights had been um, watered down uh, because of tamper because they didn't follow the constitutional rules for voting in those other four states. So they were saying our votes have been affected by the way that you didn't run your votes constitutionally, your voting process constitutionally. So the court actually said, well, you don't really have any standing, which is uh, what it is, is the ability of a party to demonstrate to the court sufficient connection to or uh, and harm from the law. They, they weren't able to show that, so they, they rejected it. So then, of course, we had the the um, the Electoral College vote and, and Biden wins that. Mm -hmm. which I thought was interesting because I thought that there was going to be some contesting from some of the states. But interestingly, what I found out was that there are seven states out there now that we're calling them uh, dueling electors where they've, they've turned in uh, two separate, uh, they call them slates of electors. And um, so in those seven states, they're getting a vote from their electors for Joe Biden and a vote for President Trump. So on the sixth, what happens constitutionally is that uh, the House and Senate actually formally uh, count the votes. This is what actually determines who the president is. And uh, they're saying that these states could contest that and that could turn into a, uh, a battle which will result in the House actually voting for who the president is. So who knows if all of that's going to happen wow. or not, but this has become extremely complicated. And it it's shouldn't be hard to follow. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. There's there's stuff in the Constitution. There's different acts that have been passed over the years. There's precedent that's been set. There's a lot of different moving parts here. And I bet you most people are having a very hard time staying on top of this. I am myself. Wow. Yeah, I certainly I, I've given up on it a long time ago. And I've been honestly staying away from that side of the news. I, I don't have I don't have it in me. Uh, for one, like you said, you can't even, you, it's hard. yeah, you can't even stay on top of it. So I've kind of let go, I, I let go of this myself and all I hope I don't see it happening, but we should, we should just do some reform to the election process. Like we said before, if you got a driver's license, it equals a vote, go online and vote, register there, vote. That's it. Yeah, there's got to be an easier way to to make this happen. But um, I say that uh, the, the, at the very least, this the the opening up of all of these challenges has everything to do with these states not following the constitutional process. So if they would have done that, there would have been no grounds for for any of this. So mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 the mail in ballot had everything to do with how they made changes and, and went outside of the Constitution. And it's opened up this whole can of worms once again. It has everything to do with combining branches of power together, which equals corruption every single time. That's what happened in this election. That's mm -hmm. why we're in this big problem. That's why people can't talk to each other anymore. Mm -hmm. That's why we haven't figured out who the, the president is. It's yeah. the same story over and over again. All right, dude. Um, so you're going to let me know when we're going to do the next Yeah, one? let me talk to Anne-Marie and okay. I'll get back to you. Because uh, if we don't do it on Christmas Eve, I mean, I don't see doing it on Christmas Day. I could because we're going to be here alone, but... 
I don't see you. You're probably going to be real busy. Yeah. The only, the other option would be to do it on Wednesday morning. Oh, okay. Sure. So we have those two choices. Okay. Well, let me know. I'm, I'm game for either. And okay. Kind of cool. If we could do a nice Christmassy fun podcast. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool, man. I got a meeting I got to jump yep. into. So I uh, love you, man. Yep. I love you too, bro. Uh, yep. Have a good weekend. Yeah, you too.